and welcome to another episode of Digging History and Honoring the Sacrifice. I'm James McCormick, and we have Bravo over here. This show is going to be all about this guy right here, because Bravo has become kind of a celebrity. As a matter of fact, when people see us that watch the show, they recognize him more than they recognize me now, and that's okay. But I think it's important to let everybody see some of the real actions and antics of Bravo in the field, because they sure are fun sometimes. You know, Bravo has become a master of photo bombing and film bombing, but he's still a good boy, and I love him a lot. You know, those folks that have a service dog or a pet or a companion animal, you know, those are great things to have and to add into your life. You know, Bravo has brought a lot of happiness and a lot of joy, not just to me, but to all of you and to our family and to anybody that really gets a chance to meet this guy. He's friendly, he's fun, but he's also kind of goofy sometimes. You know, he likes to play with sticks and one of his famous things is to try to grab the artifacts before I get a chance to show you what they are. Now, he looks real innocent right here now, but he sure can be a, a funny guy out in the woods. So we're going to watch some of his unedited versions of Bravo in the field. And then we're also going to talk a little bit about safety, like we always do when we're out metal detecting. Weather's starting to change, folks. We've seen an unnaturally, and not really a natural uh, uh, heat that has come back. You know, it started to get cold, and then it started to get warm again. Um, about two weeks ago, we were out, and uh, I had 14 ticks. Unbelievable, 14 ticks. I thought for sure we were out of the tick season, but you're not out of the tick season, so make sure that you or your your service animal or your pet or your friends or your kids or whoever's out there with you, you know, still put on the bug spray, still be cognizant of, of where you're stepping and where you're going to, and then always check yourself when you get out of the woods because there are tick, there are still ticks out there and, and there are still some, uh, some opportunities for you to run into snakes. Uh, we have run into a lot of snakes this year, uh, a little more than normal. Uh, most of them have been very harmless, you know, garter snakes and um, uh, black snakes, no problem whatsoever. But we've seen some copperheads, and we've seen a couple of timber rattlers. Uh, so you got to be careful of those while you're out there. Also, when you see this unseasonably uh, warm temperatures, then you're going to also deal with other critters like skunks. And we've had a few run-ins with skunks. Um, not that Bravo got sprayed or I got sprayed, thank you for that, uh, but we have managed to uh, get close enough to where we knew it was time for us to back off because those skunks were starting to get a little bit frisky. So you got to watch out for all of those things. Remember, you're not the only person that's in the woods or in the park or on the beach or wherever it is you're metal detecting. You know, you have to be mindful that there's animals, there's other people, there's other pets. So if you have a service dog and you're out there or you have a pet that you have that goes with you, keep your animal under control. With a leash, you can tie them off. Notice he perked his ears up when I said that too because he knows that I need him to be near me at all times and I don't want to uh, have to chase him around. So sometimes, you know, there's, uh, there's retractable leashes. Uh, if I'm in an area where there's a lot of people, I'll put it to my belt, I'll slip it onto him, and then he doesn't go any further than six feet in any direction from me. And that works just fine. Bravo has been doing this long enough that he knows to get out of the way of the swing of the metal detector. But as you'll see in some of these videos, folks, you're gonna see in some of these videos that he still likes to get his nose in the way sometimes. And that's what makes it so much fun. So this episode of Digging History is really about the fun times that I have with Bravo and the unedited version of what it's really like 
to dig with a service dog. So folks, you sit back and you enjoy the video and all these clips. I'm sure you're gonna get a few laughs and that's gonna be just great by me. And you'll see us find a few cool things in spite of all that. Uh, so sit back, relax, enjoy the videos from the field and we'll be right back with Digging History and Honoring the Sacrifice with James McCormick and Bravo, the service dog. Okay, Bravo and I, he's over there. I just wanna kinda show you what he does out here. Um, now he likes to stay pretty close to me most of the time. But sometimes, you know, he circles around me like a, <laughs> like a vulture. <laughs> Go off. <laughs> We've been out here for about four hours and Bravo just goes and jumps up and down. Come on, boy. Come on. <laughs> oh, you're getting tired too, aren't you, buddy? Pretty good day today. We did find silver. 1837 seated Liberty not from the silver heist. It was about 37 years before that. I think it was around 1802, so about 35 years before that coin was made. But I think I'm in a good spot. I'm not telling anybody where the spot's at <laughs> because I need to come back up here and hunt it again. Maybe tomorrow, so. Getting dark now, isn't it? Bravo. Time for the ghost to come out. Ooh. Okay, digging history fans. James and Bravo here. We're coming out of the woods. Not a real successful day. But as I was out there walking around, I did find uh, some sort of a medallion. I don't know. I think John F. Kennedy's on it. Um, I could be wrong, but I'll clean it up and look. So, here's the deal. Um, you go, you hit it every day, or however many days you can hit it. And some days you're going to do real well. Let me put my hat back on. And some days you're going to not do real well. But every day you're out here, you're getting exercise. And it's, it is a mental health break to get out and do something for yourself. And I'm telling you, get out and do it. Don't don't worry about your age. You know, if you wanna go see a doctor, you should see a doctor, make sure you're cleared. But, uh, but you see a lot of things down here. We've seen deer, we've seen snakes. We found an old uh, privy here. We'll come back here later one day and we'll root through it and see if we can find anything. But, I was up there in the woods and I was walking and I found a, a chain wrapped around a tree. And it reminded me of a pretty wicked story that a good friend of mine told me, uh, who's been dead now for about six years. And Doc knew everything about this area. And he told me the story about a guy that used to have a dog and he worked in the mines. And he would tie the dog up on a chain uh, up on his up on the walkway back and uh, you know where he walked to work everybody walked to work and it was a big area there uh, we find a lot of stuff on that trail well one day he was working in the mine and it came a really bad storm well when he came back out he could see it was a really bad storm he got worried about his dog and so he went to the mine foreman. He said, hey, he said, will you let me go get my dog and make sure that he's okay? And it was a real bad storm. I mean, it was really bad. And the man went to go uh, ask his foreman again because his foreman said, give me a minute. His foreman said, no, your dog will be fine. Get back to work. That's what we pay you to do. And that's just the way things work. Doc told me this was probably around 19, 
19, 19, 18 time frame, either right, either right at the end of World War I or, uh, or pretty close to the end of it. And so the man worked his whole shift and it was getting dark and he came back and he was looking for his dog. And he found the chain. And it had rained so bad that this poor dog had slipped and strangled himself with the chain. Uh, because it was a steep hill, it had rained, and I'm sure the dog was running around, he slipped and he was just hanging there and he'd been dead for quite some time. Probably during most of the storm. Um, well, Doc told me that this, uh, this worker was enraged by this because he knows that if his, uh, his boss would have let him go, he could have probably saved his dog's life. And I found a chain wrapped around a tree up there and it was very, very old and the tree had grown around it. And it was on that trail, and I'm not kidding, I wish that I would've got a video of it, and when, next time I'm up there, I will. But Doc told me that the man was enraged about that, and he went to his supervisor's home, which is right up here behind me, and he murdered him. Just walked in, shot him dead. Uh, burned his cabin down, and no joke, you can go up in here and you can find, you know, the remnants of a burnt house. Now, I've never verified that story, but I never had a reason to verify that story because Doc never lied. And so he probably got it from somebody else, and it may have been even before 1919. But one thing that Doc did tell me is back in these woods that every now and then, said, you'll hear a dog barking and you'll see a man walking with a dog and uh while i have not seen that yet i'm sitting here right about the time that it's getting to be dusk and as bravo and i were coming out of the woods we didn't see it but we surely heard a dog barking now could it have been one of the dogs in the neighborhood probably maybe but it was awful close to where we saw that chain, folks. So, it's getting close to Halloween. And uh, while this isn't, I guess it is a ghost story, because it's built, most ghost stories are built on partial truths um, and some exasperations over the year. But I do believe that there was a man that was killed in this area because he was a supervisor that would not let his miner go and get his dog in a storm. Um, it's just kind of spooky. <laughs> right where I'm at is where that cabin was at that burnt down. So, uh, and that's Bravo, and that's James McCormick. We're gonna tell you, have a great day, folks. Keep your eyes open, get out, get to digging. Remember, you can't find anything sitting on the couch. Nice. Get out and test yourself, right, Bravo? Smile, Bravo. <laughs> There's Bravo with the big stick. He's always carrying a stick, but I found something here that you don't see too much of here, okay, folks? Now, if I'm not mistaken, this is a container possibly for men to pee in like a bedpan. Not sure, but I think that's what that is. I'll do some research on it and, and let you know if I find anything else about it. That's the only thing I can think that it can be. But if it's something else, folks, let me know. Don't let me be stupid here, okay? So when I put it in this bag, oh, bravo. He loves to chew stuff, folks. He's still a pup, aren't you, buddy? Are you a good dog? Is that a good stick? Let me get a hold of that thing.
Okay, well, we're gonna get to digging. We ain't got much daylight left. Uh, you know, that's probably the, the coolest thing I have found today. And Bravo, obviously, he always finds the coolest sticks when he's out here. So, um, who knows? We'll find out. Hey, folks, this is under a log here. Now, I don't know that it's anything valuable, but I want to show you the power of this detector. Okay? So, it's under a bunch of leaves. I had to move all these leaves. Bravo. Uh, you gotta watch him. I just found a inner walk, uh, uh, you know, a cog out of a, a clock. I suspect this is probably gonna be a shotgun shell, but it could be something else. So we're looking at three inches down, almost four. So if you're looking for clues or you know, maybe you're trying to solve uh trying to find a missing ring or a or maybe you're looking for uh like i said clues earlier uh for an old cold case getting a metal detector out pretty good idea I'm just telling you. Okay, now this is this is something green. Uh, it could be an old buckle. I don't know. I do not know. Uh, Be something like junk but um, but again the point that I'm making here is that it's a pretty good tool to have in the having the toolbox folks all right that it no nope, that's a root Good Lord. There it is. There it is right there. Huh. Old piece of brass. Don't know what it is. But still, it was deep. This is a walk. Let's see where the deer use the trail up here, but this place used to be booming with people. And at one point there was a, a lost silver shipment here, which is pretty amazing. So, and the verification of that history is pretty amazing too. I just don't think it's here anymore. I think we're We're, it's long gone. So, ooh, look, deer hunters. You know what that is? Look at that rub. <sighs> Already got the briar burrs on me. Again, it's October the 30th today. Second day. 
on a very specific targeted hunt. This creek has been changed. Bravo, see some. Bravo. Hey. I believe we're going to find something today. Looky there. Serious. Something scratching around in here. Bravo see something. That green briar is just terrible. All right, folks, we're going to climb a hill here. Okay, digging history fans, I found the old silver, and I'm not even kidding. It was just a little itty-bitty signal. Let me give this a Ow. I don't think it's the missing silver, but it's definitely a half-dime. Um, 1837. All right, right over the hill is the big arch and river. I think this is a trail that was traveled really, really well. That's a beautiful half dime, folks. Uh, I'm not going to do much to it. I'm going to soak it in water. I'm going to mark this location. Something was going on here. I'll, I'll just be honest with you. It was just so weird. My back, started, my lower back just started killing me as I was digging for this thing. So, anyways, 1837. I think that the silver that uh, they're talking about was late 1700s. But still, this is a great find. We're out here at our park. And Bravo likes to come here. But I've been in this area a lot of times. But I've missed this, whatever, and I think I know what it is. Uh, I think you can tell what it is too, if we can get his big snout out of the way here. Right here. I have walked over this <laughs> at least a dozen times. Out. <laughs> there it is. So, hey, everybody. Just fork you okay that's that's what i'm telling you <laughs> bravo you are crazy look at this dog just look at him bravo look at the camera look you ain't even looking you're just looking at that he wants it all right folks keep watching on digging history i'm out here with that 15 inch search quill that's why i found this thing i've walked over it a dozen times um i don't think it's silver <laughs> he wants that fork he's not getting that fork you're not getting it all right folks keep watching on digging this thing we do find some cool stuff Bravo. okay digging history fans i got bravo back here he's back there sleeping again he had a rough day here bravo Hey, buddy. Hey. No, I know. <laughs> and welcome back. Hey, what did you think about those videos? Wasn't it cool to see how Bravo really is? So the next time you see Bravo, make sure that you remind him that you've seen the real side of him. And remember, folks, all of those schools and libraries and, and any of those organizations or institutions out there, even private businesses, if you want Bravo and I to come to your location to talk about what we do with metal detecting, with what we do and how I handle Bravo, or you just want to pet the guy, I'd be happy to do that free of charge. It doesn't cost you anything. In addition, folks, 
I've still got some artifacts. So you teachers that are out there that are teaching Civil War history or the history of Appalachia, please feel free to give me a call. My phone number is always posted and you can email me directly at wvpurpleheart1863 at gmail.com. That's wvpurpleheart1863 at gmail.com or you can call me at area code 304-206-6065 or you can find us on Facebook or you can reach out to us through YouTube or you can contact us through the West Virginia Library Commission and the studio here. They always pass along your messages and it's so good to hear that so many people enjoy this show. We've been doing this for over two years now, folks, and we enjoy every minute of it. I did leave out on the intro that we had an interesting weekend this past weekend. I went and was, did some skydiving this weekend. That was a lot of fun, but I did it professionally with the group called the Flying Tiger Skydiving Club, and I went to Anderson, South Carolina, and actually jumped with the Royal Laotian Airborne, which is a unit um, uh, that is uh, from the old Laotian government that's in exile. And we got to jump with them, and I earned my Royal Laotian jump wings, and that was a lot of fun to do that. Uh, we are working up a, uh, an effort right now to take Mr. Bravo here, and allow him to jump out of an airplane with me. Won't that be a lot of fun? When we do that, we'll definitely get some of that video for this show because I think you'll enjoy it. Again, thank you so much for watching us at Digging History and Honoring the Sacrifice. And remember folks, that uh, an adventure is just as, uh, can be just a short trip to your library. If you, if you have not been to your local library in a while, Get up and go, folks. Enjoy the opportunity to crack open a book. Study. Enjoy these resources that are given to you free of charge that you and I can use. Because, you know, not every country, not every organization offers these things like we, like we do here in West Virginia. And if you have a local library and you need to do some studying or you just want to go in and escape the rat race, for just a few hours, take your kids and go read a book. It's a great place to go. The libraries are great places to be, and we would love to see you. Again, if you ever need anything from us, email us or call us. We'd be happy to come visit you and put on a demonstration with James McCormick and Bravo the Service Dog and Digging History, and we'd be happy to do it, folks. Take care, everybody, and have a great day.